Not Your Average Radio, Big Homie Monsky, MixBosses.com. And I have a very special guest in the house today. Shout out to my homie, Shane Sparks. How you doing, brother? Yo, I'm good. California, nice hot night. Chilling by my pool, hanging out, man. See, that's the beauty of, of doing these interviews on the phone, you know? Like, I interviewed Miss Ellenette. She was chilling on the couch, you know, like on the Lazy Boy with her feet up. You know, you're chilling by the pool. The homie Wacko was chilling in the car outside of, of IHOP. You just don't know <laughs> where you're chilling when you're on the interview. No, I feel you. And see, what I like about this is you don't have to get dressed. You don't have to drive all over to California. You don't have to wait nowhere. You just do your day. The time comes, you dial in the number. You what's good. Let's go. Let's talk about the real and move on. That's what's up, man. All right. So I got the homie Shane Sparks in the building. No, not in the building, but you know, you guys don't know the difference. In the building. <laughs> We're just talking about how you're not in the building, and then I go and say, he's in the building. What a dumbass. Yeah, but don't worry. Nobody listens to me. I'm just here. Anyways, so, uh, hey, first off, you know, like I always like to do how we came across each other or how we met. So shout out to Barbara Sanchez for uh, linking us up at the Stevie Dub event, man. So shout out to her for hooking me up with a, another amazing person, man. So shout out to her. Yeah, that was, like, she's always been looking out for me, man, since day one. So, big shout out to you and Barbara Sanchez and Seven Percenters. Like, they hooked me up with some gear and they had a great show. The show that I actually met you at was incredible, man. And um, I, I appreciate people like that. Cause not a lot of people want to do nothing for you these days. So, shout out and I appreciate you, Barbara. Yeah, man, you're absolutely right. You know, everybody that she rocks with, everybody that she's uh, introduced me to are all the same. They grind real hard. They, they're really successful in what they're doing and they're humble they're humble and they go out of they go out of their way to help you out man so i don't know what she has she has like the magic spell but you know it's really dope <laughs> Yeah, definitely appreciate her for that. Dope interview. That, you know, all the stuff that we're doing, it's going to be more things coming up. We already got another meeting set up together to uh, look at the future for things that she has going on, stuff that I have going on. So it's only going uphill every day. And so I just appreciate that. Yeah, definitely, man. And yeah, she's just a really good friend of mine, too. And I'm included in the, in her grind. So I am, I really appreciate that as well. Okay, so I, I, you know, I usually interview independent artists. Uh, I have because of Barbara Sanchez, I've interviewed a couple actors, and um, I interviewed different entrepreneurs. But you are definitely the first choreographer that I ever met and or interviewed. So you know, I want to get to know a little bit about you and how you get into that. Like, how did you get started? The cool thing to do is everybody wants to be a rapper. You know what I mean? So it's like when mm -hmm. I hear someone become an actor or or like a uh, you know in photography or something like that, like that it interests me. It's like what made you go that way? You know, instead of well, being... I'll tell you this funny story. I did not come out here to be a choreographer. I didn't even come out here to be a dancer. I just know how to dance. I've been dancing all my life. I grew up sports, gymnastics, dancing. Okay, but what happened was as I was growing up. We always danced, but we realized that you couldn't do nothing as a dancer growing up, you know, in Cincinnati. So we figured, let's make a group, a singing group, put a group together because you can sell records. When people see that you can make money or they can make money after you, they're quicker to talk to you. So we put a group together called Cold Premier. That group got so sick because they had me and my boy Chris that was dancers. The other three were singers. So us teaching them and them teaching me or teaching us, made us a, a, like a high-powered group. So we came out here, got a record deal with Giant Records. Everything was beautiful. We um, did the movie Class Act. You can go back and watch that movie and see us on stage. And everything was beautiful. But then the group broke up. I'm cutting it real short, though. The group broke up. Everybody went home. And I, was saying, I said to myself, I'm not going home until I accomplish something. I didn't come all the way here just to go back home, to go back to society and, and do nothing. So I stayed. A female that I met told me, she said, you need to start going out to these dance studios because you can actually dance. So she introduced me to Moral Landis, which is now Millennium. So me going to that studio and watching those kids learn hip-hop, you know, I was just like, this is crazy. They learning how to do hip-hop in a dance class. Well, we learned it from the streets, but I got it. You know, I understood what they were doing. So one thing led to another. Somebody missed their class. I took over their class. And everything, you know, basically it's history after that. But because I grew up on the streets creating from my own mind and dealing with other people who are creative from their own mind, I don't look at videos or watch other choreographers to learn what I do. It just comes naturally. It's a feel. So from me being like that, I was able to hold a class for the past, like, 15 years at the Millennium Dance Complex in Moralandis, Monday and Tuesday, sometimes it was Monday, Tuesday, and Sunday, without repeating choreography. I had the biggest class in California, traveled the world doing it, you know, and then, you know, word of mouth. 
you know, everything goes from word of mouth, and that's how all the other stuff happened. And we'll get to that when you ask me about that. All right. See, yes, I like you because usually, <laughs> usually when I, um, you know, when I, I always brief the, the, the person I'm interviewing before kind of give them a heads up of what I'm going to ask. Some of them just start like talking and start answering all my questions. And I'm, like, <laughs> no, <"Wait." it's> your... <laughs> I'm like, wait, 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 I haven't asked you that, you know? So <laughs> hey, that's dope that you stopped and you're like, all right, that was, that was mm-hmm. your turn, Monsky. Ask me the questions so I can keep going. That's awesome. That's what's up. That's dope. That's dope. Um, let's, let's see, real it. quick. Sorry, sorry, I lost my train of thought. You got me. You got me all excited about uh, <laughs> giving me my giving me my my space over here. Um, right. <laughs> so that's dope. See, that's that's what's up. I, I, I you know, I, when I met you, you know, obviously we've already seen what you've done. We're talking about that right now. But um, mm-hmm. you, you know, you telling me the way you started is like that's what I like, man. Like like you said, mm-hmm. you know, you most people will be will be happy. Like, hey, I came to L.A. We got a record deal. We did, you know, we did enough. I'm, you know, I'm successful. I'll go home now. But you're like, hell no. Like, I didn't, you know, I mm-hmm. it's, I got to keep going. So, again, you you were in the right place at the right time. Opportunity knocks. Somebody missed their class, and you took it over for 15 years. That's dope, man. Definitely, man. This is the, the stuff that I did. Even every out of everything that I accomplished, I still didn't feel accomplished. I still feel like there's so many things that I need to do and want to do. So I was, I'm always searching for the next step going to the next level and looking to explore my brain, my talent, my creativity, no matter what I've accomplished. You know what I mean? Right, definitely. And something I do want to talk about as well, and that's kind of, you know, it, it was a little bit back, so I don't know if that's what you're working on right now or something you worked on, is, of course, um, and, and this is a long name, so I had to write it down. Let's see. Amer- uh, American Best American Dance Best Crew. Dance. Yeah, I always screw mm-hmm. it up. I'm like, I'm like American <laughs> Crew Dance Best. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Anyways, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how did that come along? That came through your travels as um, when you were teaching that class? Well, it came like this. There's this show called Hip Hop International. It's a big dance competition that happens once a year. At, uh, it was in Vegas. I think it just moved from Vegas to somewhere else. But it's um, bringing international dancers to L.A. to battle, and you become, you know, most, the best international dance crew in the world, basically. So we did that for like five or six years. I was there every year doing it. And somebody came to me and was like, yo, we want to do a TV show about this. So it was in the works, and they told me about it, but I didn't know what was up. And then one day, I was at one of the shows, and Randy Jackson comes up to me. He's like, yo, I got something I want to talk to you about. And I'm just like, what's up? He was like, I'm going to call you. So Randy called me. He hit me up, and uh, he was like, we got ABDC coming out, America's Best Dance Crew, and we're looking for judges. So I need you to come in and audition for it. So I was already on So You Think You Can Dance. So he was just like, you know, like, I love your personality. I love, you know, your charisma on camera. I want to see what you do over here. And I was super excited because as much as I love So You Think You Can Dance, it never really highlighted the street world or the hip-hop world as much as I thought it should. So when he told me about this, I was 100% in. And I'll tell you a little story, too. When I did this and went to the audition, they was like, okay, good. You know, I didn't think I got it. I just didn't know. You know what I mean? They called me up maybe a week later. My agent called me up and was like, okay, well, you got booked for American Best Dance Crew, but I'm a little upset because you're going from a, a network show, Fox. So you think you dance to go to cable. And I was like, you know what's funny about this? I said, the network, the, the hip hop show, the cable show is me 100%. I feel way more comfortable. I'll take less money to do something that I love than to have a lot of money doing something I'm, you know, I'm kind of like, it's not my world. You know, even though it's dance, it's my world, but it's not my world. Like, I could never critique somebody doing a quick step on a foxtrot. I could never critique that. I could say if it looks good or if it's dope, but I can't be like, well, you got to hold your shoulders up and bring your legs around and you got to straighten your back up and posture. Like, I, I would they'd be like, you don't know what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> then I, I don't want to put myself in that position because they know, people who do that, they know if I know what I'm talking about. But you put me on ABDC, something I grew up doing all my life that's in my blood, then I'm on, I'm a king. I'm on top of the world so when i booked that show i was like that was probably the, the highlight of my life and the crazy part about it is i was when i started doing abdc i had to stop doing so you think you could dance because they didn't want me to do both shows at the same time so that hurt my heart but just the, the world the universe is so cold after two seasons of doing it we had to talk with him uh, so you think you could dance and the demand of me coming back they brought me back so you think you could dance so i was doing both shows simultaneously so i was on two of the top dance shows in the world at the same time which no choreographer had really ever done you know it, i have a story to tell you know i have a lot of stuff that i want to talk about but that's how i get abdc that's dope man. that's dope i didn't even know about the other one the thing you can dance man i gotta step up yeah, so you, <laughs> yeah 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 so you think you could dance came from 
me doing You Got Served, when me, Dave Scott, and Robert Huffman, when we all got together to film that movie, that movie was so big, if anybody knew anything about dance, they knew our names. So when So You Think You Could Dance was coming out, it wasn't called So You Think You Could Dance uh, yet. But uh, Nigel Lipko called my agent and said, I want the choreographer of So You Think You Could Dance. So I went down there and interviewed with him, had a long interview. We got along perfectly. But it was still like a draw between, or uh, it was up in the air between me and uh, Marty Kadelka. And Marty Kadelka is Justin Timberlake's choreographer. So he's sick. I'm sick. We both, you know, and, it, and the thing that people don't realize that all the dancers, like top dancers, choreographers, we play volleyball every weekend. So on Saturdays, we would meet up and I would look at uh, Marty. He would look at me. I'd be like, did you get it? He's like, nope. He asked me. I was like, nope. So for like maybe three weekends in the world, we would look at each other like, uh, and he told me the last weekend, he's like, they called me back. I was like, oh my God, my heart dropped because I knew it, it was over. But M uh, Marty went on there for a couple of weeks and then they called me in. I'm not sure how long he did it, but they called me in after that. And they only wanted me in for one episode. And I came in and just ripped that show. And I was on every episode after that for the next four seasons, I think. That's when ABDC came along and, um, you know, and it just all just evolved one thing after another. So it's a beautiful situation, man. Man, this is dope. But I see, I always like to do my research on, on people. You know, even though I knew your basics, you know, I did my little research and, I, man, I got to step up my research game. <laughs> for real, for real. We have the homie Shane Sparks right here on Not Your Average Radio just dropping a bunch of information of stuff that you've already done. We definitely had to get you back because it seems like you have a lot to talk about. No, but definitely, I do. Definitely, I do. man. So, so this next question, I'm like, I can't wait. So you've already done so much. You kind of talked about what you were doing at the Stevie Dub event. Let everybody know what you're working on right now. Well, right now I have, um, I'm doing, because I came out here doing music, I went back to my roots a little bit. So I'm working on a solo project right now. And I'm going under the name of Six Ultra. That's the first time I said that. Uh, but it's going to be ridiculous. <laughs> I was like, what, what is it? What is it? That was awesome. Anyways, I'm sorry. That was dope. Yeah, I'll get into it later, like the next time I'm, because I want the project to do the process. But I'm going under six ultra. And if you understand what the word ultra means and what the, 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 the number six means in different areas, you get it. It's ridiculous. But I'm coming out, I'm taking over because I'm old school, dude. I'm taking over the MC Hammer, the whole dance club, the whole, like, Bobby Brown mixed with a little bit of Chris Brown and a little bit of, you know, just I'm taking everything because I grew up watching all these people. I grew up training so many artists. Like, I've developed so many artists that people have no idea about. Some of them made it, some of them didn't. But I have this formula of what people want to see and what they need to do to get to where I need them to be. So somebody wants to, they say, yo, you get music, you need to just try it one time before your time is up. And I was like, you know what, let me do that. So I went into the studio, got with my boy Ness, and we coming out with Fire, and I got a song called You Ain't Hot Enough to Be in My Video. Ugh. So sick. We work on the second song I got is uh, Make It Rain. And then the third one, we haven't started on the third one yet. But I got like maybe 10 songs that I want to do, but I'm only going to do a couple. I'm going to test the water, do a hot-ass video, go take it back to where choreography is dope, dancing is dope, energy is dope, ripping the stage, and turning out a crowd. You know what I mean? And hyping people up again. Giving people an artist that they can enjoy. Not somebody that's going to be constantly like throwing negative energy their way. It's not about that. It's about being hyped and having fun man i'm excited that's what's up that's what we need we need someone to hype us mm -hmm. up bring us some good music hype us up it like hype us up in like the old school way not like the the turn up yeah shit, man you know I mean? yeah oh, that's what's okay, up okay now, now check it out this is for the dance world right here i created this show i'm only gonna give a little information on it because it's so top secret but i'm gonna let you know a little bit of it it's called Domain, and if anybody is into hot, into Empire, which is my favorite show, and Power, which is my second favorite show, I got a show called Domain. It's about the dance world, but it's about two dance agencies that are rivals. Two guys grew up in the hood, dancing, battling. They fall out over some relationship with some female, but they both are sick as dancers. So when their time is over as dancers, they both decide to open up these dance studios. And these dance studios are rivaling. So what happens is the bad dude that's running the studio is taking girls and, you know, there's a lot of girls in California that have to go-go dance, they have to strip, they have to do crazy stuff to make money, make ends meet. 
he's taking advantage of that. So he's sending these girls out and making them do crazy stuff while the other owner of the other studio or other agency is trying to clean up the dance world because he's been in it so long and he wants to see us succeed in a positive way. So the whole story is them two basically going back and forth, him trying to stop him from corrupting the dance world. So it's sexy, it's energetic, it's fun, it's uh, a bunch of just crazy, you know, when was the last time you seen a dance movie that was like, had drama in it from somebody getting shot? Somebody getting killed, somebody getting into a fight, somebody getting robbed. You know what I mean? Somebody getting, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm bringing way more drama to it than the average dance show where two guys are fighting and they battle at the end and people win money. It's nothing about that. It's about that girl that comes to California sleeping in her car and every day is a day that could change her life and every day is a day that she could go back home. You know what I mean? So I want to touch on all the things that I've witnessed, stuff that I've experienced and things that a lot of people just don't know about the dance bro. But these two dance studios are basically telling the stories. You know what I mean? So I mean, not dance studios, but these two dance agencies. Everything is happening between those two worlds and um, it's really ridiculous if you could see the trailer i shot and put together man you'd be like i can't wait to watch it that's what i'm doing for the dance world so get ready wow that's what's up i, I don't even have to watch the trailer just the the motivation the energy in your voice i'm like i want to watch it you know what i'm saying yeah that's dope. I'm i like you, it i show it to people and they go crazy like i can't wait to see what this is going to turn into so right now anybody who's watching this because i haven't even started shopping it yet i'm going to start shopping in the next couple of weeks but if y'all know any directors any producers that know anything about shopping tv shows or if you're looking for something like that hit me up or hit this radio station up not your average radio and get me because it's definitely going to change the game there's a lot of kids that come out here to the dance world and they have no idea what it's really like they think they go come out here and do a video and have a lot of money no the average person in a video is broke the average person that does a movie is broke as a dancer they're living in two bedroom apartments with three and four people on the bus hustling, taking classes every day and trying to get hooked up, taking free classes. They have no idea what they're coming out here to see and I want to warn them so when they come out here, they're prepared. A lot of people come out here unprepared and then they go back home, you know, so I'm going to kind of stop that. Man, that's what's up, man. You heard it here first on Not Your Average Radio. That's dope. I Bless, mm -hmm. brother. Bless. So, hey, so if, if some other show comes out similar to your idea, it was me. I just tell you right now. Nah. <laughs> hey, I got it copywritten. It's all, I, I got everything taken care of. So, if anybody like, come out with it, it's going to be a problem. You're like, see you in court, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. That's yes, what's sir. up. That's dope. Hey, right now, off the air, because I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, I have ideas too. You know what I'm saying? Hey, we're off the mm -hmm. air. I'm going to pitch you something and see what you think. But I'm not going to say it on the air because i don't want i don't have it copywritten so i don't want people all right, in my right, business. Right. you know what i'm saying no, that's what's up and again this is not your average radio we got the homie shane sparks on the interview dope interview man thank you so much again like i told you before we've been talking for a little bit so let's go ahead and i'm gonna just play one song i usually play about two i'm gonna play one song because i feel like you got a lot to say let's play one song and we'll be right back with, the homie, with the homie shane sparks right here at not your average radio Cause in this life that I think is and think not, they want me to quit. Not your average radio, big homie Monsky, mixbosses.com, and we're back with the homie Shane Sparks. How you doing, brother? Yo, I'm still here. You're chilling. Let's get it. We're still chilling, having a good time. Man. Hey, we're already getting a lot of feedback, man, that they're loving your interview. Uh, the homie K9 saying he likes to interview. Uh, Baby J is showing love, man. So shout out to you, man, for coming over and just, you know, dropping that, that knowledge and, and that love. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. See, this is what, what really pisses me off, I'll say that, you know, about this industry and about my career is I learned so much and I have so much to offer and so much to give and somebody wasn't appreciating it. So when I had to go through my whole court thing and all that whole scandal with me and the girl like five years ago, the media and that girl didn't really understand what they were stopping by doing that to me. 
And when I see the dance world today and I see these dancers doing what they do and I see them not getting any knowledge and nobody trying to help them, everybody's like out for themselves, it hurts me because my whole goal in the whole dance world from day one was to change the game, was to put us in a position where we could get paid like an actor, man, like an athlete, where we, cause we're, we're, we're the most important part of any show when we're involved. You can't watch a Chris Brown show or Britney Spears show, uh, you know, half these artists out there without the dancing behind it. And they be making these shows. And I'm not taking nothing away from the artists, but Chris Brown, Usher, uh, Bieber, like all of them dope. They all got their own thing, you know. But without those dancers, it would just, you know, it would take a lot away from what they, they're offering. So why don't we get the respect? You know what I mean? An a actor could come in a show and do a cameo for five seconds for 10 minutes and make $100,000 million. A, a dancer could come into a, a two-hour show <laughs> and probably get $500,000 that night. You know what I mean? That's crazy to me, man. That's crazy to me. So I've been wanting to change. The, the only thing that, you know, I know we kind of talked about this a little bit offline, but the thing that makes me a little bit bitter is the fact that somebody came in and stopped everything that I was trying to do and stopped my momentum. But the good part about it is I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about people. And I learned a lot about business. You know what I mean? And when you get time to yourself to think, it opens up so many other avenues. So now the good part about my second time coming around doing what I do, I'm more of a businessman. And that's why I want to do the artist thing. That's why I want to direct and produce these TV shows. I have so many ideas that I want to get out there to the world. And before, I couldn't do those things because I was caught up on ABDC, so you think you could dance. You have no idea how many offers I had on the tape for other shows and TV shows, but I couldn't do it because I was in the contract. Now I have the opportunity to do these things, but I just got to clear all that bull crap out the air so people can realize, like, you know, there's things that you do in life, and, you know, you're not thinking at the time that you do it, and if people want to come back and say, you know, this is what happened when you're famous, when it's just crazy how two people can be so, like, together and then somebody can come back and just want to destroy them just out of spite. And then the whole world just follows, you know. But my personality, my um, my future, and what I'm destined to do would never be stopped. It just got slowed down. I had to learn a few more things. I'm back and I'm hustling. I'm going to come back strong. Anybody that was a fan, everybody, anybody that is a fan, trust me, I'll be back. That's what's yeah. up, man. Hey, was this kind of like your um? I know, I know what you're talking about, you know, because I, I, I did come across this while doing my investigation. But is this is this part of the uh, a difficult thing that you overcame, or you want to talk about something else? Because I haven't asked you that question yet. Yeah, that's why I said because I know we kind of talked about it off air. But that was the that was the hardest thing for me to deal with because it's like, dude, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I never was in a gang, I don't carry no weapon, you know what I mean? I don't can cheat on like lie to people, I don't connive people, I don't steer people in the wrong way. That's just not my personality. Anybody who knows me knows that every time I'm around, I'm inspiring. Anytime somebody comes around me, they're like, dude, you just inspire me to get back into the game or to start, you know what I mean? Or you just change my mind or I'm hyped again. But that's all I do is inspire people. I've had my ups and downs through life, but I never had anything crazy happen to me. And I've never done nothing crazy to nobody. I've only helped. So for that to happen to me, it was almost like a slap in my face because I was like, there's a million people on TV right now that's dancing that I either gave them their first class or gave them their first job or inspired them in some, some type of way. They would never say anything negative about me as a person and doing nothing stupid, you know what I mean? Because that's just not my personality. But to stay away from all of that and be that type of person, it's crazy to me that that happened. You know what I mean? I was like, wow, there's people out here telling you what they're doing on the records. You see them in the club. You see them out doing this. And people still look at him like, oh, my God, but he's still my favorite. And they still making millions of dollars and accepting in your living room. And I don't do none of that. None of that. It was, and the crazy part about it, a lot of people thought it was the year that it happened. Like, they thought the year that they accused me of doing this, that's when it happened. It had happened 15 years before that. So it was something that when I was 20-something years old, like 22, 23, you know, when you're that young, you just, that, you're not thinking about nothing. I wasn't famous. I was just out here from Cincinnati just trying to make a life. And I had to, I ended up running into somebody who I thought was cool, 
but found out at the end of the day, which a lot of people don't know, that person was stealing from the studio that she was working at, and she lied her age to work there because you have to be a certain age to work at the front desk. So the illusion was me seeing her was like, okay, well, I'm not thinking like anything else, but that's a girl that, you know, she should be of age because she's working there. But they didn't bring that out in the media like, oh, you know what? She shouldn't have been working in the first place. Oh, she got fired for stealing. And everybody says, well, why did you stop talking to her? I didn't stop talking to her. She disappeared. But she got fired, so I never saw her again. You know what I mean? But these are the things they don't tell the media so or tell the public. So the public is just think, oh, he's out there doing this to girls. And I'm like, what? What do I look like doing this to a person? And she said I did it seven, like, I think six or seven times. How do you do something like that six or seven times without the person just like, ah, I'm going to kill you, Laura. I'm going to the cops. You know what I mean? But she waits 15 years to do it when I'm on top of the world after I made all the sacrifices of being away from my family, women being away from everything that I love. You know what I mean? And she has no idea what she took away from me because I was taking care of so many people, you know? And it's, it's, it's just crazy. But at the end of the day, like I said, I learned a lot. And I don't want to say I don't trust nobody, but I would never give nobody 100% trust ever again. You know, and I just got to, you know, you just got to watch your back. And this is for me to anybody that's trying to make it in any part of the industry. Everything that you tell somebody is only ammunition for them to throw back in your face or to use against you when they get mad at you. And the time will come when they'll get mad at you. Because nothing lasts forever. I don't care how much you love this person. So be careful of the information that you share because it will hurt you in the end. Pay attention. Man, that's crazy. But hey, put it this way. The media doesn't talk about the other stuff because it doesn't sell. The media is a business too. You know what I mean? So, yep. so that's, you know, like things that I hear in the media, it's like, holy shit, that's crazy. But at the end of the day, I believe like 20% of it because I think a movie it probably tells us more truth than the news does. <laughs> I'm, I'm being serious. Yep. I'm not even yep. kidding. Definitely. And, you know what I mean? So th that's why the media just says what sells. Oh, this, 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 this hip hop, mm -hmm. this hip hop choreographer is doing this. Oh shit. He's, he's a monster. You know what I mean? And exactly. That's it. That's all they say because that's all yeah, that sells. Man. They don't exactly. tell you the whole story. So now nah, don't even worry about it, man. You know what I'm saying? And the, the thing that's, that's important. And I, I like what you said earlier is even though, you know, this happened to you, like you said, I still needed to learn something. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so that's dope. Instead of saying like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm done. Uh, you know, like this, it took me five steps backwards. You're like, you know what? I learned from this. I'm a better, I'm a stronger person now. Like you said, you're more business oriented instead of, you know, again, most cool people when they're coming up, you, you want to help everybody. You want to be friends with everybody. And you mm -hmm. know, it, it, it bit you in the ass, you know, so, so to speak. So now, now you're more professional. You're more to the point and you know again you're you're doing your thing anyways so much respect to you brother i appreciate that man so nice. yeah if anybody out there is listening if y'all want to get in contact with me or get in touch with me or whatever you got my instagram shane sparks 5678 twitter sparks 5678 facebook is shane sparks just get at me if y'all got questions or if y'all need if y'all need information or if you just need to be inspired or if you're trying to get into the dance world and you just need somebody to, you know, you have a few questions, I'll answer them the best way that I can. And I don't know everything, but I've seen and done a lot. So, you know, I'm just there for y'all. And you still do the, the dance studio thing you said, like on Tuesdays and Thursdays and sometimes Sunday? Or you don't do that uh -uh. anymore? Well, I haven't, I haven't taught class since that happened to me. But I've been traveling a lot. I've been doing workshops. But I don't, I don't have a steady class. But I just joined up with um, a lady by the name of Noreen. She has a studio called West Coast Dance, and it just moved to North Hollywood, if anybody's familiar with that area. So we're rebuilding her studio. So we're about three studios in. We got about two more studios to finish to complete the whole building, and then we're going to start promoting it and start getting choreographers in there. And then I'll definitely have a, you know, a permanent class there. So right now, that's one of the projects that we're working on on a DL. And it's going to be beautiful, man. I miss teaching so much. You know, that teaching was like my bread and butter for a long time. Right, right. No, the reason I'm asking is I have to get in there, man. I got to, you know, show me some moves or something, man, some hip-hop moves. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I, I need to be an extra in your movie, in your show. You know what I mean? I, I'm trying. No. To, I'm going in for the whole the hey, whole ride, brother. I'm telling you this. When I get a show picked up, it's going to change the game because I'm not, I think from a street point of view, 
but I have the the knowledge of Hollywood. You know what I mean? So I got the best of both worlds because I've experienced both worlds. And I'm going to have everybody that means something, that wants to inspire, and that has a story in my show. Because the good thing about my show is it's not about dance 90% of the time. It's about different artists. It's going to be episodes about an artist that need dancers. So the whole episode might just be the, the, the lifestyle of this artist being on drugs or doing crazy stuff and then overcoming what he's going through. You know what I mean? Or it might be a DJ, a DJ, a DJ at a show or something and the dancer come there and he messes up something and he's got, you know what I mean? It could be so many avenues that I can hit within this show because, you know, I just seen and experienced so many different things and that's what's going to keep this show hype. Characters will come out of the left, they will come out of left field. You're like, oh my God. Where did she come from? Where did he come from? I thought this was all about dance. No, dance is the undertone because that's what I do, and that's what's going to keep the show moving. But there's a lot of elements in this entertainment world that people don't know about, and they need to know about, and I'm going to bring that. There you go, man. So let me know when you're going to do a radio host with backup dancers in the back. When I'm... <laughs> I like it. <laughs> you're stupid. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Like right now, like me and you no, are talking, no. and in the background right now, we got people doing like a choreography in the back. You know what I'm saying? That's dope. Yeah. Now, see, 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 see this, this, this is how I think. What's, what's happening is a show, one of the episodes open up, and the choreographer has got this um, big performance coming up, but he's always doing drugs. You know what I mean? And the first thing he has to do at six in the morning, he has to do this interview, and the interview is on a radio station, and the radio guy knows him personally and he asks him some questions that the dude never wanted to ask or answer because he knows him personally. So like, the whole show is based around these questions that he's dealing with. Now, so is it true that you did this? Is it true that you went through this? But well, we heard on, you know, not your average radio that you did this and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And, 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 like how sick would that be? And now he's got to confront you personally. And now, like, dude, I'm, I'm, my mind is crazy. Damn. Sign me up. I'm already excited. Let's do it. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. So, hey, you, you're already talking about, uh, like I told you, the last question that I like to ask is about future goals or stuff like that. But obviously, you already mentioned it. So that's it. <laughs> you know, you're, obviously, you're working on your show and, and working on that. And uh, and also, you're, um, are we going to call it a mixtape, uh, EP, an album? What are we talking for Ultra 6 or 6 Ultra? Yes, yeah, Six Ultra, yes. Is that going to be now, an album? Or what are you working on? Well, what I want to do is I want to do, um, I just want to do single deals, like situation, you know what I mean? I kind of right, want right. to play with the internet for a minute. I kind of want to play online for a bit. I want to do a dope video, dope single, just flood it, get all the people that I know, all the people who love and respect me as an artist and as a dancer, choreographer, to just push it, push it, push it, because I want to get a buzz, because I want to be, I don't want to just get a record deal and put a record out there, because people don't really do it that way no more. I want to just leak it, I want to do shows at these clubs, I want to go rip these shows so people can be fans of me as an artist, not because I'm Shane Sparks, but as an artist, and then I want to see a deal from there. I want longevity, you know, I want to be a real performer, entertainer, you know what I mean? That's my goal. So as soon as I'm ready, I'm going to hit you up, I'm going to drop videos, I'm going to drop dance videos, I'm going to drop the, the song, and I'm going to go and just kill the industry, just rip, because that, that's what I do. That's what's up. And I'm pretty sure you have people that do videos and stuff like that. But in case you need someone, let me know. I, I, I rock with like three really dope videographers right here in the independent hip-hop scene, man. So you let me know. That's <laughs> just what's in up. case. Just throwing that out there. That's what's up. You know, that's what's up. I'll definitely hit you up about that, man, because uh, I got so many ideas that I want to get out there, so many dancers and choreographers that I want to put on or do something, do some type of collab with it. You know what I mean? That's what's so. up. We working here, man. You hear it here first on Nitro Average Radio. Shout out to Barbara Sanchez. She says, <laughs> she says, soap opera coming soon with Monsky and Shane Sparks. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that's what's up. Hey, she's gonna be the she's the publicist of that. So hey, you better be ready, Barbara. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, See, um, yeah, man, yo, I appreciate this opportunity for me to talk, and um, you know, it's always good to get stuff off your chest. It's always good for people to hear what's really going on and get the truth from the horse's mouth because you know it's couldn't speak for the longest because they were telling me to be quiet. They were telling me don't go to the media, don't say nothing. TMZ was after me. Everybody was like, come tell us your story, tell us your story. But they were telling me to be quiet. And the only thing that I regret is not putting it out there sooner, you know what I mean? So people could know what was really going on because it kind of made people feel like, oh, he must be guilty because he's not talking. You no, know, it had nothing to do with that. I was sitting there ready to go. You know, I'm a, I'm a talkative person and I'm an honest person. And if I did something wrong, I'm going to admit to 
to it. And I'll, I'll apologize for it. But if somebody's accusing me of something, saying I did this and did that, I'm ready to talk, you know. So let's go. Okay. I mean, that's a good question. Like you said, something happened when you were young, 10, 15 years later, when you were famous, you know, you're doing all these shows on TV and stuff like that. Now, all of a sudden, this comes up. We all know it happens to everybody. You know, once you're famous, all of a sudden, you know, just like Bill Cosby, you know, all of a sudden, exactly 50 years later, all this crazy shit's happening to the guy. So your advice, your advice to someone, you know, because we're all here trying to get our grind on and, and, you know, hopefully we all make it and hopefully that you know, that something that we do now doesn't affect us 10 years from now. Exactly. But, if it, but if it does, do you, your advice is to talk about it, to tell your sto- your side of the story? My advice is this. First, get a good lawyer before you say or do anything. That's number one. And then second, when you get the opportunity to tell your side, take advantage of that because a lot of times you have people in your corner that don't really know what they're talking about. They think they do. And you'll listen to them and then you'll lose everything or you'll fail. Go off your gut. If you feel like you need to say something, especially when you're telling the truth and you know what you did, what they're accusing you of is not real, not right, you should speak out as soon as you can so people can know what's really going on. Because a lot of times it's so political and people trying to make money and people trying to shut you up because they want the case to go longer and they're fucking, they, they messing up your life. And they don't care because once it's getting done, they make their money and they get their little fame or whatever and you start losing everything. And then you'd never hear from when we can. No, follow your heart and say what you need to say and do what you need to do. And if a lawyer or anybody in your court is telling you not to do something that you feel strongly about, that's not the right person for you. There you go. So that's it. That's it. Mm-hmm. Boom. <laughs> he drops the mic and walks out. <laughs> exactly. I'm walking back into my room. What a bit. <laughs> that's what's up. Again, man, the homie Shane Sparks right here on Not Your Average Radio, man. Thank you so much for blessing us with this great interview. Again, I can't wait to have you back once you do your music and your videos and stuff like that. And, you know, you always have a home here on Not Your Average Radio, brother. That's what's up, man. I appreciate your time. and You're doing an excellent job. Hey, that means so much coming from you, brother. Shout out to the homie Shane Sparks right here, Not Your Average Radio.